Give me a good morning and thank you very much for your time. Morning. I'm sure you're glad that uh, it's been launched and it's up and running. How many young people have you signed up already with the private sector to kickstart this program? We actually have the Government Gazette coming out tomorrow, which is the BE Rewards and Recognition. So we're not signing, our work is not to sign up young people in the short term. We are working on the demand side. We're a business-led initiative. And the idea is there are lots of databases out there with young people waiting for jobs. So the signing up of young people isn't the issue. It's how do we create new jobs. And so it's signing up of companies. That is really uh, our intention. Mm -hmm. Yesterday at the launch, we announced um, the over 500 sign-up companies. And there are a list of over 10. Nedbank First Rand, Investec. Um, so, we, so we have a list which is, uh, which is out there. And uh, we, are, we are being overwhelmed by goodwill from the business side, from the private sector, of people who understand the importance of youth unemployment and addressing it. Um, and I think once the Gazette is out tomorrow and we're able to publish clearer information on how that works, uh, we should see a tidal wave of, of private sector opportunities opening up. Okay, so the idea from what I understand is that the private sector the companies will take in unemployed youth, those youth who otherwise would not have had an opportunity to get a job. Yes. And then when they'll take them, they'll give them a real job for one year. So let's clarify what a, what a real job is. It's, it's the private sector that is going to drive jobs creation and pay for jobs. So if you take the financial services sector, for example, this is not a sector that grows with jobs. You know, you grow through efficiencies, algorithms, even C-suite executives are becoming redundant. So the idea is that you take as many young people as you can into your shop floors, factories, uh, storefronts as you can but if you can't because if we look at you know we've got high profit very low headcount companies if your target your yes target which we work out via a formula um, is quite high if it's over 500 over a thousand you say we can't we don't have capacity for these young people in our infrastructure we have an SMME placement strategy which helps it's, it's a double win we will then place young people into SMMEs around the country in communities closer to where young people are. So there's a, a shorter geographic distance, educational distance between the jobs and uh, young I th people. I thought you said it's not a signing up. You said business must create a job. So are you expecting SMEs as well to create those jobs when they are battling themselves to survive today? In South so those, those SMME placements are paid for by the company that can't fit the youth into their own infrastructure. So they are willing to pay the salary of that young person to get the work experience and the, their black owned SMME is, has their capacity built because they don't have uh, the resources to be able to hire young people. So you expect the young people to have a real job? Uh, that's what is my question. Are these real jobs? Because my understanding is that it's going to have to be on top of the existing workforce in a yes. company. Yes. You take on extra young people who otherwise would not have had an opportunity right. to gain work experience. Yes. So I think your question has to distinguish between where the job is. So when you talk about a real job, I'm assuming you are talking about a corporate job at, at, at a... At a well, uh, let's take our newsroom as an example. Yes. Let's take ENC. Let's yes. say uh, this company signs up and says we are supporting ES initiative. Mm -hmm. I have a newsroom. I've got editors, I've right. got uh, writers, I've got reporters. Mm -hmm. So a young person can come in. You expect, yes, expects them to be given a real task so they yes. are there they absolutely. will be not just sitting around and 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 doing nothing that's a real job well absolutely. So they have to carry out tasks that are defined as to what a job would be absolutely so any company signing up with yes has a code of conduct uh, um, ethics and values that they have to sign up for and this is that you will give valuable experience to this young person so we are trying to drive an apprenticeship type model but the point is that if you can't give them what you are describing as a real job here, where the apprentice, the guy is holding the cameras, etc., cetera, um, and you say, we, we're actually full, we will say, okay, please pay for a young person to be at a creative agency that is in Alex, for example. Another production house. Another production there. house. You can pay for that experience, and the young per you get the benefits of yes, which are the recognitions on the DTI, employment tax incentive, etc., and that business gets a youth resource because SMMEs don't hire the resources so, yeah, Some cynics would say why then entice or encourage business because they're going to get a BE 
uh, something on their scorecard. Mm -hmm. I mean, shouldn't this really be the job situation in Africa is so dire mm -hmm. that it's not really about scoring points on your mm -hmm. BE scorecard? Absolutely. Why did you decide that you must include a specific mm -hmm. BES target mm -hmm. that will benefit corporates? Yes, so, so absolutely. Um, this 5.9 million unemployed youth is a problem for business across the country. Whether it is a large corporate because of the instability that joblessness causes or a tiny SMME in a township. For business across the board, instability is not good, high unemployment is not good. But in terms of uh, why do we need some kind of reward system recognition, the, the employment tax incentive, if you look at the economic uh, uh, indicators. We've had flat line growth for a long time. We also look at the jobs numbers and the jobs growth. That 5.9 million is not moving. It's a sticky, sticky number. So we have to do something differently. Um, businesses are profit maximizing. We're asking them to buy into the broader narrative of country growth. But you know, government and business with the CEO initiative did agree that this would be a joint collaborative model. So government is saying these are the ways we will contribute. 330,000 jobs a year is going to cost an entry level salary will cost over 16 billion rand. So government is saying we will put in part of that, but we'll do it via these incentive type schemes and business, you do it by paying the young person. Okay, Jasmine, finally, before I let you go, the EFF has criticized this in parliament yesterday, mm -hmm. saying that this so-called, as I said, employment youth service mm -hmm. is like an extended uh, uh, EPW program, the extended public works program mm -hmm. of the government, and it does not create sustainable jobs. Mm -hmm. A quick response to the EFF from yes. So the, the, uh, this is probably because it's a year-long work experience. What research tells us is that if you de-risk a young person that has been locked out of economic participation, they have no matric certificate, no graduate certificate to prove to an employer that this is a worthy candidate, um, this year-long experience gives them a CV, it gives them a reference letter, it gives them an ability to prove to the world that they can do a job. And we find, not we find, the research says that this greatly multiplies the opportunities and chances for them to get callbacks at future interviews. And this is really amplified for women. I think in a six months time or so we'll touch base again to see how Please. the program is going. Thank Please. you very much.